said that to say that I want to encourage the people of God. Mark chapter 8, verse 22. And I'm going to read down to about verse 26. They came to Bethsaida. And some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were open. His sight was restored. And he saw everything clearly. Jesus sent him home saying, don't even go into the village. Don't even go into the village. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We will hide God's word in our heart that we may not sin against God. Amen. Motivational speaker Tony Robbins drives a point home quite often. The point is simply this, that we experience happiness when we are doing something that is very simple, but something that people tend to take for granted. That thing that people tend to take for granted that is one of those things that really brings happiness is one word. And that thing is this word and is housed in this word. The word is progress. Somebody say progress. For many of us, we get so hung up on trying to do what? Big things. I am a, I have spent a lot of time uh, listening and reading. I, I was really into uh, Grant, uh, 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 Grant Cardone. He is a uh, author. He became a speaker. He is a business individual who uh, teaches people how to become uh, successful in business in various ways, uh, much of which has to do with real estate. But Grant Cardone wrote a book uh, some years ago called 10X. That book 10X, I, and I love the book 10X. It was one of my favorites during that time in my life because I realized to make strides, sometimes you gotta shoot, as they say on Password. I love Kiki Palmer on the new game show, which is really an old game show, Password. Uh, every now and then, she say, on this round, you have the opportunity to shoot the moon. <laughs> and that means that if you know, you think you know the answer, you can tell her, I wanna shoot the moon. That means you got one chance to answer correctly, and if you answer correctly, you get to add a whole bunch of points to your score. And so I love the opportunity when we have that opportunity to shoot the moon. That means to go big. Somebody say go big. Go big. Uh, they had a stand that says go big or Go home, go big or go home. Uh, I love that. I, I love the whole 10x principle. I love uh, uh, that that he talks about uh, uh, upping your uh, your uh, work ten times, uh, doing your work uh, uh, ten times. 
times more and stronger and harder and faster than you've been going up in it 10 times. I, I love that. But many times with that thought, what we miss is the power of as my uh, original motivational speaker, the late Robert Shuler used to say, inch by inch, anything is a cinch. Inch by inch, anything is a cinch. What does that mean? So many times we take for granted that we can do big things if we just do it inch by inch. And so many times we take for granted that it is the little things that make the big difference. I know we want to 10x it. I know we want to we want to shoot the moon and I know we want to go fast. We want to go far. We want to do all of this great stuff, but never discount the power of little. I, I, I heard the song ordinary people. He uses people who are willing to do as he commands. And, and when you uh, uh, yield what you have to the Lord, he says the song says, little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. Uh, uh, so the point is, never doubt the power of what you prayed this morning. Though things may seem small, there's power in the name of Jesus. And when the Lord is in it, God can move for people that what 2,000 2, people couldn't do, 220, uh, uh, 2, uh, 13, 12 can do. Like scripture says, these few men have turned the world upside down. Tell somebody, don't doubt the power of a little progression. Don't, don't doubt the power of a little progression. I told a story some years ago of the man who I saw on a news show. And they were showing him because he was a multi-millionaire. And he was a multi-millionaire. You've heard me tell the story of him who he would sit on the streets of New York uh, and sit on the streets uh, on a crate and had the boxes, these boxes around him. And he set up a table and had vegetables and he would peel vegetables with this uh, little uh, thing he made, which was a vegetable peeler, a little plastic a vegetable peeler with a blade on it and he would peel vegetables so fast and people would gather around him and watch him peel these vegetables and fast he, he would do this on the streets of New York City day after day after day selling these little vegetable peelers and he would sell them for right around eight dollars a piece eight dollars a piece selling these peelers and after a while some time goes by this man is a multi-millionaire he's a multi-millionaire and one of the main reasons he is is because of this eight dollar vegetable peeler and they said what do you equate as your secret for your success and he says it like this never doubt the power of a little bit of money he said, a little bit of money? They said, a little bit of money? He said, yes. He said, though it may just be $8, uh, but, but if I get a million people to see my presentation in the streets of New York where he's exposed to millions uh, upon millions of people, all I got to sit here is show this. And he had boxes full of these little $8 vegetable peelers. And the more he sold, over time, he becomes a millionaire. And he said, inch by inch, basically, anything is a sense. They said, how do you, how do you eat an elephant? They said, one bite at a time. Tell somebody, it's called progress. Just make progress. So we get to the text. You say, well, what does that have to do with the text? Well, look at the text. What happens is, is a controversial story here. Uh, uh, it is a controversial situation because we are here with Jesus and the disciples and a blind man that people bring to Jesus. They bring this blind man to Jesus and many scholars have interpreted 
this uh, reading and this story or this healing as a symbol of ignorance and the ignorance of the disciples. Uh, many people just see the story for what it is in verse 22 and to verse 26. But if you realize before verse 22, Jesus is talking to the disciples and he's talking to the 12. And he says in verse 20, and when he broke uh, the seven loaves for uh, 4,000, how many baskets full of pieces did you pick up? And they answered seven. And he said to them, do you still not understand what is happening here is Jesus is about to use with this blind man another example of what happens when we don't get it tell somebody you got to get it you got to get it uh, when we don't get it so many times we walk around seeing uh, uh, things not like they should be we see things through a glass darkly but Jesus exposes uh, us to what is becoming a real interesting situation. Why? Because the disciples who don't see clearly, he says, uh, uh, we understand that if we read this the way it provides, one way we understand is the disciples' hardness of heart. Only meaning that only God can remove the hardness or blindness. Only God can remove the hardness or blindness. This is the first of two blind healing stories which frame the large section in Mark. So we have uh, chapter 8 verses 22 to 26 and chapter 10 verses 46 to 52. Jesus performs this healing outside of the village. Uh, I want you to take notice of this. Uh, when he's in the village, he doesn't heal the man in the village. Uh, you got to start paying attention already because now he grabs the man by the hand and takes him out of the village. Perhaps because of what? Because of his method. It's possibly because of the method that he's going to use in gospel narration and narrative. This is only the time Jesus, a unique situation or unique demonstration, whether the person has been healed or not. After Jesus touches him again, the man's sight is fully restored. I'm here to tell you, not all healing is instantaneous. Not all healing is instantaneous. And I know this is not going to be a fun message for the, uh, 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 the name it and claim it, the blab it and grab it, the slap it and have it. Uh, that's not going to be popular for that group of people. But you got to understand, sometimes Jesus healed folks immediately. And then there were times, if you remember in scripture, they got healed as they went. Sometimes healing is what? A progression. Healing many times is a progression. Uh, you can answer the question yourself because yes, you know God healed you. Uh, I'm looking at one of you here today who just recently had a bout over sickness and, and God healed you. You're sitting here today, you're strong, you're looking better than ever, but you know it didn't happen overnight. Matter of fact, you had to stay home. You had to be at home so many days. You, you couldn't come out. Why? Because you're healing. You got it. But it took time. Tell somebody, sometimes it takes a little time. You cannot be afraid of progression. Tell your neighbor, don't be afraid of progression. Progression is important in many situations. It is that progress that is important. Sometimes you got to understand it's good to just take your time. It's good to understand that it takes time. Uh, even God in his word tells us to consider the ant in wisdom. Look at the ant. They ain't tearing down builders. They ain't, uh, they ain't doing what the bulldozer does. But, but just give them some time and the ant will work out work anybody. Why? Because they know how to get it done. It don't look like much is happening, but stuff is happening. I looked at my vine, uh, uh, the vines in a, on my back porch uh, where my wife, and I know I allude to it quite often, had planted uh, these cucumbers. And, and a few days ago we looked and it was only a few cucumbers on the vine. 
but I looked the other day and I called to her. She was in the other side of the house and I said, I said, babe, you, have you seen how many cucumbers are out here? I don't know when it happened, but God knows we double or triple. She double or triple the cucumbers that were on the vine. Tell somebody it was progression. I don't know when it happened. I don't know if it happened while we were asleep. But, but I'm here to tell you, everything has changed. What was one day is totally different today. Yes. You got to understand there's power in progress. Tell somebody there's power in progress. You got to understand there's power in progress. All I'm going to tell you right now is don't quit. Don't quit. Somebody uh, said to me yesterday, they said, uh, Bishop, how are things going? I said, things are going. I said, church is church. We're doing what church does. Uh, he said, well, that's a good thing. Uh, he said, "He said, well, what's your secret? I said, I haven't quit. <laughs> and, and I've learned that uh, many times you'll get the victory if you just don't quit. Uh, too many times we don't get the victory because we quit too soon. We quit before we got the victory. Some of y'all seen those pictures where the man uh, was going away uh, 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 with his tool on his shoulder, disappointed because uh, he was digging for diamonds and, and he's going away, going back home but the picture shows that, that he was about two inches from the victory but he quit just before he got there. Tell somebody keep moving. Just keep making progress. So what we got to understand is the power of progression. You got to understand that uh, in the words of what folks used to say years ago, I, I may not be what I want to be, but thank God I'm not what I used to be. Why are you not what you used to be? Because you just keep making progress. And I may not be where everybody else is today, but I'm going to just keep moving because God is watching over his word to what? Perform it. So this blind man comes to Jesus as I start to move towards my clothes. The blind man comes to Jesus and they bring him to Jesus. Jesus takes him out of the village, but Jesus does something odd. And this is the Jesus that you love. Oh, Jesus. Oh, how sweet the name. Jesus every day proclaims. Oh, Jesus, how I love your name. I love you, Jesus, more than anything. Oh, I love you. I lift my hands to worship you and adore you. That's why I had to sing that good, sweet praise song uh, uh, before I told you this, before I tell you this. And, and that is that in a few minutes, uh, Jesus is going to take this man out the village and spit on his face. Yeah. Uh, somebody said, same Jesus. Oh, uh, y'all missed it. Y'all Y'all think I'm making this up? Uh, he did, when he, had, when he got, had gotten the man outside of the village, when he had spit on the man's eyes, and put his hands on him. Jesus asked, do you see anything? I love it how Jesus uses uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, means of, of spitting on the eyes. Notice he don't use this for people who can see already. Smart guy. <laughs> uh, Jesus, is, Jesus is wise. Uh, uh, because Jesus spits on him. But Jesus knows who to spit on. He spit on, he spit on a blind man. A blind man don't care. He don't know. He can't see a thing. He don't know if that was water uh, 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 out, of, uh, uh, out of a bottle. Or, or water out of a basin. or what. He just knows that something is on his eyes. And now uh, uh, Jesus is touching his eyes. When he touched the man's eyes, put his hands on him, he asked the man, do you see anything? And this is where this, this text gets real controversial. The man says, uh, he says what? He says, uh, I, I, he looked up, he said, I see people, they look like trees, walking around. Oh, wow. Now we got a problem. This becomes kind of uh, uh, like the tent. Uh, the tension in the text. Why? Because you got Jesus, the great physician, the healer, uh, uh, the one who is Jehovah, Rophi, the God, uh, uh, connected to the God who is our healer, one and the same. But here is Jesus. He's laying hands. He spit on the man's eyes. You go through all of this and still the man don't have complete vision. He ain't 2020 yet, Jay. Uh, he, he, looking, he looking like you were looking uh, uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, uh, still trying to figure it out uh, 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 until you got your miracle. Uh, and now you're calling in here with no glasses on talking about, I got 2020. Somebody must have spit on your eyes. It must have been the law. Somebody didn't touch you because now he's 2020. All of a sudden, you just got to hold on. I don't care how God gives us the victory. 
century, we got to understand that even the medical community are an extension of the grace of God. And don't downplay, don't downplay the grace. Somebody say, don't downplay the grace. Don't downplay the grace. Uh, uh, I just ain't a good time for me to go in here, uh, uh, but I got a little agitated uh, uh, because this ain't a political move, but I got a little agitated uh, uh, because you got to understand uh, uh, that when I was born and raised, I was born and raised in a church uh, where it was started uh, in the 20s uh, or so by women. Uh, Bishop Ida Robinson and that church till today is primarily led by women. I, I grew up in a church started by women uh, when it was uncommon and not the thing to do. Uh, I grew up, my grandmother born into a church where my grandmother was pastor. And then when I became of age and my grandmother passed, my mother became the pastor. So the only pastor I've ever had is women. And I understood that church to be uh, even in uh, those days when I was young, the largest black Pentecostal church in Richmond, Virginia, a pastor uh, built by a woman. And then uh, to hear people uh, getting a little antsy in the barber shop uh, because uh, because we in a position, give me a minute, because we in a position where, where, where some folks, whatever side you're on of the aisle, but this side is possibly going to have a woman uh, that's going to be running for the presidency. Uh, and I had heard some men saying some things that I had to challenge when you come up like I come up and when you got a pastor that just stood up and invited us to host pastor to the summit as a woman, my wife. Uh, uh, so I understand women and leadership. So I get a little antsy when I hear men trying to downplay women. See, and then I had this theological crazy revelation because, because for years I've heard people say, and they say it in a negative connotation. They said, do you not know how we got humanity and human race got in this position we in? And I say, how we get in there? And they said, don't forget the beginning. How the woman ate from that tree and gave it to a man and that's how we got in the fix that we in. Well, I kind of start getting trippy on that. I said, well, if that's the case, that one woman can change the whole, uh, the, the whole complexion and direction of society, that tells me that what we do in this society is we underestimate women and overestimate men. I'm back to my text. I just dropped that right there. Y'all work with that. Y'all work with that on your own. Well, that's what we do, right? We do. We underestimate women and we overestimate men. But at the same time, you just told me that a woman can change the course and destiny of all of humanity and you think she can? Oh, I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, just, just a thought, just a thought, just a thought, just a thought. So you can't listen to every commercial you hear. Uh, 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 that's why they're trying to take your power because they know how powerful you really are. Uh-huh. The hand that rocks the cradle is the one that rules the world. But you'll get that later. So he took the man aside. He said, I see them walking as trees. So once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were open. His sight was restored and he saw everything clearly. So what are we looking at? We are looking at a progression. Somebody say a progression. Jesus uses a progression. Now we think Jesus is Jesus is losing, right? He, he, he don't have the power that he has. And, and what we don't understand is what he's doing is using this as what? A teaching moment. Somebody say a teaching moment. Yes, he could have done it where this man was healed immediately the first time he'd done it before. He could have done it this time. But what's happening is he's got some disciples that still don't understand that their eyes need to be open. And it didn't happen the moment they start following him. But they're going to follow him until the point where they finally see some won't even see clearly until after the ascension will they finally see it. Some won't see it until they get in the upper room and ask will they finally see it. That, that's because everybody's not going to get it today. Somebody tell somebody, everybody's not going to get it today. 
I love it because this man, when Jesus touches him the second time, his eyes are open and his sight was restored. So if you see this, what you start to think is this happened in three stages. As I close, stage number one, it looks like the man is blind, right? Looks like he's blind. They bring him to Jesus. Jesus lays and spits on the man's eye, touches his eye. And stage two, the man sees, but he sees uh, people as trees walking. Stage two. And then stage three, Jesus is uh, praying, uh, uh, lays his hands on him, touches him again, and this man's sight is restored. Now he sees clearly. But I want to just challenge you because even though we see three stages, really it's four. You say, well, how did you get to four? Well, if you understand the fact that one, this man sees people as what? Trees walking. Now you gotta understand, this man was blind, right? How does he see people as trees walking? Well, I want to tell you that if he sees people as trees walking, that would tell you one thing. Before he became blind, he saw. Yes. That's right. Well, Somebody said, before he was blind, he saw. The only way he would know what trees look like and what people look like is he has to have seen trees and people before. Most people see a blind man come and assume that this man has been blind. But I'm here to tell you, he hasn't been blind all the time, obviously, because when you look at the text, you, you realize that in verse 23, he took the blind man by the hand, led him outside. When he had spit on him, uh, 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 let me go back to verse 22. They came to Bethsaida and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took blind man and had by the hand he led him outside when he spit on him, his eyes he put his hands on Jesus uh, on his uh, Jesus asked him do you see anything he, he looked up he said I see people as trees walking once more Jesus put uh, uh, on the man's eyes then his eyes were open his sight was uh, you missed it restored that tells you that in that one move that was a word that changed everything Jesus was not giving him his sight for the first time. Jesus was restoring his sight again. Some of us might need our eyes touched again. Uh, some of us, we've been here a long time and we forgot. That's why I had to give you that little side note. Because some of us uh, have been downplaying and or underestimating people that uh, we should not be underestimating because we forgot who they really were. And, and the truth is, Jesus is healing a man who is seen before. And what is happening is, what Jesus is doing is restoring his sight. Giving him back my sight. I love it how the psalmist said, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. This is why God, I don't need God necessarily today to put his hands on my eyes. But I need him to put his hands on my heart. But because some of us need a heart restored. Some of us need a mind restored. Some of us need a hearing restored. Some of us need a understanding restored. And so I'm asking God restore to me. Because I need my joy back. Because I realize when I'm coming sometimes and doing the work of the Lord, I realize that I've been sent of some of my joy. Because what you have to understand is when you fool with people most of your life and when you do the work of ministry, it's people business. And sometimes you can lose the joy. That's why you gotta say, God, I need to restore my joy. I need you to touch my heart. I need you to touch my mind. I need you to touch my spirit. And then some of us really do need our sight restored. Because we can't see what's all around us. That's why the prophet said God touched this young man's eyes. That he can see that there's more for us than there are against us. Some folks can't come to church because they're blind. They eyes, they lost their sight. What they thought they saw, they don't see no more. The way I used to think, they don't think no more. The way they used to live, they don't live no more. 
because they need their sight restored. They need their joy restored. They need their, sa their salvation restored. They need their peace restored. But I'm here to tell you, we serve the God of the restoration. And if you don't have it today, all I tell you is, uh, keep moving. <laughs> tell somebody, just keep moving. <laughs> tell them progress, progress. Uh, if I had to use for a subject, uh, it would be simply make progress. Uh, you might not be batting a thousand, but keep batting a hundred. You might not be tearing the roof off, but keep tearing the door off. You might not be tearing the roof off, uh, but keep opening up the windows. You might not be burning down the bushes, but keep burning the yard. Tell somebody just keep moving. Though the race may seem long, keep moving, keep moving on. For the race that is not given to the swift, nor to the strong, but is given to the one that endures until the end. Tell somebody, I ain't trying to beat you. I'm trying to run my own race. The goal is that I just got to win. I don't care when I get there. As long as I get there. At the funeral yesterday, they were celebrating the life of Curly Brown. But several people said, they said, I know you made it. But the beauty is, you can't crown him until we get there. Tell somebody that he can't crown him until we get there. Because you know it or not, believe it or not, he can't crown him until you get there. He can't crown him until I get there. And I know I ain't there yet, but I'm walking by faith. We've come this far.
because that ain't your race. So I don't spend a lot of time watching. Yes. Because then we start to compete and compare. That ain't my race. I don't even care what my children are doing on it. They ain't running my race. They're not in, they're not in the same race I'm in. Hallelujah. We all are running a race, the Bible says, but only one received the prize. So one, run that you may obtain. What that means is, you say, well, if it's only one prize, and only one is going to receive the prize, what's the point? If a million, seven million, however million of us run in the race, and only one of us going to get the prize. Well, the reality of that is that the only person that's in the race is you. The only person that's in your race is you. Believe it or not, I'm not in your race. You're the only one in your race. That prize is made up for you. You're the only one that can receive that prize because you're the only one in that race. God has given all of us a race to run. He set a race. How do you know it's an individual race? Because you are an individual. Even the identical twin has some things that makes them different. Tell somebody it's a different race. Yes. We're in one kingdom. But we're all running the race God has set for us to run. I got to run my race. You got to run yours. And there's only one prize for your race. Now, if you quit, you don't get the prize. But if you keep moving, you will win. And the prize is waiting for you. But you can't quit. It's a progression. It's not going to always be easy. That's why James Cleveland sang the song, I don't feel no ways tied. Come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. But here's progression. I don't believe it. <laughs> it brought me this far to leave me. That signals progression. Just keep moving. Because he didn't bring you this far to leave you. Tell somebody he didn't. He's not gonna leave me now. He's never, he promised never to leave us. The hymn says, I seen the lightning flashing, I heard the thunder roll. But he's promised never to leave me. I'm skipping to the end. Never to leave me alone. No never alone. He promised never to leave me. Never to leave me alone. So just keep moving. Keep making progress. Tell somebody it's a progression.